taxes, for going to that flat tax that he talked about. Uh, we'll get through this and get back on the issues and get into Iowa and the early states and talk about the job record and the job creation that we uh, are so uh, concerned about and campaigning on. You know, some of the reporters who cover him on the trail day in and day out point out he makes this point lucidly every day. He names these agencies in order day after day after day. I, what was it about this instance? Was it just exhaustion? Do you think he didn't get enough question time and had these periods of a, a lull where he lost his energy? What Specifically, why tonight? Well, Carl, there were long lulls between questions that may have had something to do with But But look, anyone who has been on television, anyone who's been in the public arena knows that there are going to be times when you just can't uh, reach a word on your tongue. But again, this was a, an error of style, not substance. On the, the substance, on the job records, on the job plans, we believe Governor Perry's got the best answers, and we're going to let the people of the early primary states, Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina, make those decisions. Part of the uh, response to earlier debates, criticisms of his performances in earlier debates has been, I may not be a great debater, uh, but I'm, a, I'm, I'm a, a more of a candidate than just a debater. Uh, I assume this is going to add fuel to that, that notion. Well, look, he's a real human being. He's not a robot. He's not been programmed. Uh, he's one of the, the rare breeds in politics who still speaks from the heart, who still can relate to normal people. And again, that's why we're focused on those plans. This was a, a stumble of, uh, of style on the issues, on the substance, on the job creation record in Texas and the job plans. He's on the right track. Ray Sullivan with the Perry campaign. Ray, appreciate your time tonight. Yes, sir. Thanks. Uh, we're just getting started here at Oakland University. A lot more still to come as our coverage of the CNBC Republican debate continues in just a moment. Unfounded accusations. I'm going to repeal every single Obama era regulation. If you are too big to fail, you are too big. I value my character and my integrity. We need to close the gap on the uninsured. Every American to buy any health insurance policy. The news media doesn't report accurately how the economy I works. I want to be the president of the 99%. I want to see our businesses thrive and grow. We can create opportunities for everyone in America. 999. Lower the tax rates. It's not the code that raises taxes, it's the Politician. You want the housing market to come back? The economy has to come Cut back. One trillion dollars out of the budget. It's the regulatory world that is killing America. Uncertainty is what's killing this economy. Money should be flooding into the Social Security Trust Fund. America is going to be America again. You want to get America's economy going? We know how to do it. Some of the highlights from the CNBC Republican presidential debate tonight at Oakland University in Rochester, Michigan. Joining us here on set, Mad Money host Jim Cramer of CNBC, one of the questioners tonight. And one of the more energetic questioners, I think I some would fired. agree. I I <laughs> Did you hear what you wanted to hear or not? Sometimes I get discouraged. Uh, look. People who watch our show, people who watch our network know that there was a lot of money lost today. You got Dow, Dow almost down 400 points. We got some fire raging over in Europe. Is it the time for isolationists thinking, well, you know, we'd love to not help, but I don't want our banks to, to fail because we are so insistent, not our problem. I heard a lot of not our problem tonight. Yeah. You, Worries me. You were looking for bigger picture thinking. Yeah, I also think, look, the Republicans, they, they weren't always known as shrink government, government can't help. Who built the interstate highway system? Who built the Panama Canal? Who put the Hoover Dam? Hey, the Hoover Dam. I mean, like, President Hoover. So one of my problems here is, where's the big thing? Where's the Manhattan Project? It's not so bad to help business hire either. These guys don't want government to do anything. They hate the government so much, you like to think the government never did any good ever. Yeah, it's one of the things that struck me about the room tonight. Uh, applause for anything anti-Bernanke, anti-bailout, right? Even yeah. anti-auto bailout yeah. in Detroit, Michigan. Well, look, okay, do we, do we want GM, the GM plan? if you privatized it, was to just close it, okay? You liquidate it. You sell the factories. Chrysler, completely no reason to have it. So what do we have? Toyota and Honda take over the country? The big three? Is it going to be Ford, Toyota, and Honda? I'm uncomfortable with that. Those are Japanese companies. These guys don't seem to care about any, any foreign company that takes up the vacuum. Not only that, but I asked directly a question about how about basically the, the markets? And the reaction is grow the economy. How about put away the bad guys? Yeah. I mean, we get calls every single day from the, the banks that took a fortune, still 
making people who are kicking people out of homes. And you know what? I don't want to hear that, hey, well, listen, you know, regulation's bad. Not all regulation's bad, and the government's not a bunch of stupid idiots. Did you think it was even, though, more uh, uh, constructive than the Kane conversation some thought we were going to have tonight? Well, you know, I got to tell you, I, I perhaps called it back up. It was higher end than I expected. Yeah. There was actual uh, discussion about what if you were a, a student at Oakland, you might have came back and said, what is the role of government? That was terrific. It was not a pile on fest. It was not a 92 uh, car wreck, you know, going on 95. But what I didn't hear were bold things. I heard small things. These guys, they, they want to reduce everything and they want to make it so that what well, the government plays no role in our lives. Well, that's great. You know what? Look at what happened happened in this country between 2005 and 2007. The government chose to play no role. Unregulated, rapacious capitalism lost more people more in the Dow Jones and the S&P than any other thing that occurred. Yep. It wasn't growth that killed us. It was unregulated, rapacious capitalism. And man, I am a capitalist. You're flying back tonight because you'll be... I'm not even on a plane. I'm flying by myself. We'll see you on Spillock on the Street tomorrow. Thank you very Jim much. Jim Let's get to Larry Kudlow at CNBC headquarters with some political heavy hitters. Larry? All right. Thanks very much, Carl. Here now we have Democrats. Democratic strategist Bob Schramm, who's been called the most sought after consultant in the Democratic Party. Whoosh. We also have the great Mort Zuckerman, chairman and editor in chief of U.S. News and World Report and CEO of Boston Properties, and CNBC contributor Tony Fratto, former White House deputy press secretary. Let me begin with Herman Kane. Let's go right here. CNBC's Maria Bartiromo asked Kane about his sex allegation scandal. Take a listen. You know that shareholders are reluctant to hire a CEO where there are character issues. Why should the American people hire a president if they feel there are character issues? The American people deserve better than someone being tried in the court of public opinion based on unfounded accusations. That's what that's about. All right, let me just pause right there. Um, Mort Zuckerman. Whatever you might think about Kane's programs, you might agree with it, part of it, none of it, whatever. I thought he had a really strong night getting back to his message, the 999 flat tax proposal, pro-business, pro-growth, pro-jobs, free markets, etc. And I thought he did it with such energy that he really probably did help his situation regarding the allegations. But how did you see it? I think that's a, a very good assessment of his uh, handling of the issue. It doesn't mean the issue has gone away. Right. It just means he handled it well on television. Uh, and that, I'm afraid, is the way that a lot of this is uh, taking place. I do think that issue still remains. Uh, he has a very charming and very attractive personality, and it works very well on television. But in substance, I think he's still got real problems, and I don't think he's going anywhere. Bob Strum, I ask you the same question. You don't, Mort doesn't think he's going anywhere. What do you think about his performance? tonight and is he going anywhere he is after all still the front runner regarding the polls yeah he probably did about the best he could under the circumstances if he really wants to say these accusations are unfounded he ought to ask the National Restaurant Association to put the records out there and let people make a judgment otherwise those questions are going to hang on but the truth of the matter is Larry he wasn't going to be the Republican nominee before this he isn't going to be the Republican nominee now uh, he he doesn't actually have a very serious grasp of either foreign policy or a lot of the complex questions he was asked about tonight. Tony, in terms of the economic discussion sponsored mm -hmm. by CNBC and the obvious politics that I'm talking about, who won this debate tonight? Uh, look, until somebody beats Mitt Romney, he wins the debate. And this is a, after a long series of them that... Romney uh, wins the debate. Romney wins the debate. He's, he's come through every one of these debates where uh, either they have not tried to put a glove on his chin, like tonight, I didn't see uh, any of the other candidates going after Mitt Romney, uh, or he just handles himself very, very well. He's very comfortable in this debate format, and until somebody knocks him down, he's, he wins these debates. He wins by staying steady and, and uh, staying ready for the next debate. Right. I, I want to ask a more substantive question, but first, let's go back and roll the tape on this Governor Rick Perry, who had a very bad moment in the debate. Maybe it's going to sink him in the race. I'm not smart enough to know, but take a look at what he did. It's three agencies of government when I get there that are gone. Commerce, education, and the, uh, uh, what's the third one there? Let's see. <laughs> but you yeah. can't name the third one? The third agency of government, yeah. I, would, I would do away with the education, uh, the uh, <laughs> commerce. I, I, commerce, and let's see. Oh I can't. The third one I can't. Sorry. <laughs> Oops. 
All right. I will just say, to, we already covered this earlier in the program, that speaks for itself. Whether it sinks, Mr. Governor Perry, I have no idea. Mort Zuckerman, stock's down 400 points today. Now, this is a very important substantive issue. I don't know about bailing out Italy or bailing out Europe. America doesn't want to do that. And in fact, bailing out banks that are too big to fail is extremely unpopular. But my question is, did they get the job done in terms of a strategy if Europe gets in deeper trouble and they export their banking crisis to us? Did you hear any strategic thinking apart from the bailouts? No, qu uh, quite the opposite. In a sense, you would have thought that this is just something that's happening in some other country and it's not going to cross the Atlantic. In fact, it's one of the most dangerous economic and financial events that this country has ever faced. We hope it doesn't sink this economy, but it's going to do some enormous damage before we're done. There's no way of avoiding it because there's no way that Europe can bail out Italy and Spain that money doesn't exist and we are looking at something that nobody has ever seen but this is going to be a major depression in my judgment in Europe it's bound to have an effect on the United States I'm not sure that we can do very much about it by the way but it's certainly going to have an effect on our economy all right hang on I've got to jump out uh, Bob Strum Mort Zuckerman and Tony Fratto I wish we had more time but we never do let me take it back to Carl Quintanilla all right, Larry, thank you for that. We're back here on set with uh, Chuck Todd, NBC News Chief White House Correspondent. We know the race changes every time there's a debate. Chuck. So how does right. it change tonight? Well, I think tonight it, it, Rick Perry is in deep, deep trouble. He's going to wake up tomorrow morning and find out that donors who are already in panic mode, there was no candidate who could least afford a mistake tonight than Rick Perry, and it was self-inflicted. It wasn't a, uh, an attack or it wasn't a gotcha question. It was his own standard stump speech line. You know the campaign itself is nervous. You don't see candidates, top-tier candidates, go into a spin room after and try to clean it up. That was they a good know, booking uh, or that, or th that uh, soon after the debate. No, they knew they had to do this. They don't normally do that. I think it is one of those. I have to say, I agree with Larry about Herman Cain and, and more the whole panel there. Under the circumstances, Herman Cain's performance tonight was pretty impressive given, you would think, all he's been focused on are these allegations. Now, has he cleared that hurdle? I don't think by a long shot, especially since he's dared his accusers to basically produce more evidence. But as far as his supporters are concerned tonight, I don't think he lost anybody that was sticking with him. Perry has some cash. Does that not change anything? He's got to spend it all recovering, though. That's the problem. This cash, all of his spots are positive right now because why? His negatives, his negatives rose higher uh, than any other Republican candidate in the last poll. Not Herman Cain's. It was Rick Perry's negatives have gone up. That's why he's gone up the first two spots. He's gone with bio, and bio spots. And by the way, that was another part of this debate. You know, the storyline that we would have talked about in this debate had it not been for the Perry stumble would have been, boy, these guys treated each other with kid gloves. Yeah. Why? And I would. It's be simply because they're getting out of the way of the Kane story. They knew that. Uh, any uh, attempt to go after Romney tonight to, to do something to make a moment was going to get lost in, frankly, two stories, Herman Cain and actually and Joe Paterno. And Paterno yeah. tonight, uh, which is official, as we know. Yes, Chuck, it is. Thank you, Chuck you Todd. It, a lot more to cover here with the markets plummeting nearly 400 points earlier today on the Dow. We'll get to tonight's C-suite, talk some big business, big issues. What were the CEOs looking to hear, and did they get what they wanted from any of the candidates? Our coverage of the Republican presidential candidate debate continues right after this. And, of course, after the debate comes the spin. Eamon Javers is watching how the candidates' camps are working social media tonight. Eamon. Yeah, Carl, we had 83,189 tweets on the CNBC debate hashtag tonight. That was just between the hours of 8 and 9.40 p.m. Twitter was lit up tonight. So much of it was about that Rick Perry moment that you guys have been talking about today. They were talking about it on Twitter as well. Take a look at some of these tweets that we have for you, starting with Jay Newton Small. She tweeted, OMG, Perry just forgot his own plan. When I'm president, I'll get rid of education, commerce, I can't can't name the third one. Oops. Ouch. That's a bad one. Tony Fratto also tweeting tonight. We just heard from him. He said Perry can end his campaign right now. And Rich Lowry, editor of National Review, also tweeting tonight. He said simply, this is so uncomfortable. Channeling, I think, what a lot of us felt about that moment as we watched Rick Perry struggle for words up there on the podium. Another moment that attracted a lot of attention on Twitter was the Herman Cain comment about Princess Nancy, referring to former Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Chuck Todd, who you just spoke to, tweeted, Cain's decision to 
attack Princess Nancy in this current environment. He's clearly feeling defiant. Another tweet about the Princess Nancy moment came uh, from the Herman Cain campaign. Cain staff, interestingly enough, doubled down on this idea of Princess Nancy, quote unquote. Their tweet, the answer to health, 